So we're starting Unit 4, which is called Differentiation. And we're looking at 4.1 today, which is the definition of the derivative. That's on pages 152 to 168 in your text. And make note that it's actually the first three sections in your text all sort of wrapped up in one. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of differentiation based on slope as a rate of change. And our lesson objective is to be reminded about slopes of lines, notation for slopes of lines, and what secant and tangent lines are. Number two, to learn how to use limits to find the definition of the derivative. And number three, to use the definition of the derivative to help us answer some problems. So here's some things we already know about lines. We know that they have a slope, and this is really key for us today. Um, and we know that that slope has been found in the past by using delta y over delta x, remembering that this is the change in y over the change in x. And we also know that means that if we have two points, that it would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So just to illustrate that point, if we had a point here, we called that point 1, and we called that point 2, then this point would have coordinates x1 comma y1, and this point would have x2 comma y2. So if you want to find the change in the slope, it's the change in height, so y2, this point right here, the height of this point minus the height of that point is your change in height, and x2 minus x1, the x value here minus the x value there will give you your change in your um, x values. So knowing that m equals delta y over delta x, we know that we just said that's the change in y divided by the change in x. But another way to look at that is sometimes it's called the rate of change in y with respect to x. So taking a look at this equation right here, y equals a half x minus 4, we know that the half is actually equal to your slope, which is delta y over delta x. So if we were to isolate delta y, oops, delta y, um, then we know that that is going to equal a half times delta x. And so what this is just saying is that your change in y is actually dependent on your change in x, because if your change in x goes up, then your change in y is going to go up. And in each case, for this uh, situation, it's going to be multiplied by a half. So if your change in x is 5, then your change in y is going to be 5 and a half. Likewise, with this one, with this example, if uh, we know that our slope is 3, that means delta y over delta x is equal to 3. Again, if we solve for delta y, we get 3 times delta x. So now, every time that you change your x a little bit, um, your y value is going to be 3 times larger. So we know that a tangent line is a line that touches a curve at exactly one point without crossing the curve at that point, so it just touches it. And a secant line is a line that crosses a curve at more than one point. So with this in mind, we're, we're going to be uh, developing the definition of what the derivative actually is. So calculus is basically the study of two things, derivatives and integrals. And we're going to take most of the rest of this course to talk about derivatives, and we're going to touch on some integrals at the very end of the course. Now a derivative is the slope of a line that is tangent to a curve at a specific point. And we looked at this in physics 30 when we were talking about um, instantaneous velocity. So if we had a curve and we wanted to find the velocity at exactly this point right there, we needed to actually physically draw a tangent line. And then we know that at this tangent line, Sorry, this was if it, we were talking about a uh, displacement time graph or a distance time graph, sorry. And we know that this tangent line would then give us the slope, which is delta y over delta x. And you could find the delta y is your d and your delta x is your t. And so we'd be finding the actual velocity at this specific one point. Now, we're going to be using calculus from here on out to be able to find this without doing all of this work. And we're going to use the concept of secant lines, slopes, and limits to help us find what, we, what we're going to call the definition of the derivative. OK, so we're going to draw a curve here, just something like this. And we're going to label two points on this curve. I'm going to call one of them point P, and I'm going to call one of them point Q. So what I do know already is that if I were to draw, connect these with a line, this would be called a secant line because it's going to cross these two, um, cross through these two points. Now, the, let's give this one some coordinates. If I call this, I don't know, x1, comma, x2, or sorry, y1, then this one over here is going to be x2, comma, y2. Now, what the important thing is to note is that the distance between these points horizontally is called delta x, or the change in x, and vertically that is called delta y and we could find the slope of this secant line so 
what we need to consider is what happens as this point Q actually moves down the curve and gets closer and closer and closer to point P. So this dotted line, the hypotenuse here, that's a secant line. But if I want to talk about the derivative, I'm talking about the tangent line. So eventually, as Q works its way down the curve here, so now it's here, um, as it works its way down here, we keep on drawing different secant lines. And eventually, as Q gets really, really close, um, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to P so until it's basically right on top of P. And so what's happening here is that every time that, that Q gets closer, our delta X changes. So our delta X started off as this red line here. And then as Q moved down the, the curve, uh, delta X was getting smaller. And as Q moved down the curve again, delta X is getting smaller. Q moves down the curve, delta X is getting even smaller. So what's happening is that delta X is approaching zero. As this turns from a secant line into a tangent line. Now, if you can understand that, then this next part shouldn't be too much of a stretch. We're going to redraw a similar picture, except I can't draw the same curve twice, apparently. So now I'm going to call this point P. I'm going to still call this point Q. I'm going to give this a little bit different notation when we're talking about finding coordinates of points. Since this is a function, I still call this X1, but that means that the um, Y value is F of X1. Now, we just said that the distance from point P to point Q horizontally was delta X. Well, that means that the X value for point Q here is going to be X1 plus delta X, because there is this horizontal distance between the two points from here to here, and that is delta X. And that also means that the Y value then would be F of x1 plus delta x. So remember that your y value is just f of whatever your x value is. That just means that you plug your x value into your function. Okay, so if we can understand that, then we can find the slope of this line between p and q by using the concept of the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y over the change in x is going to be the y value for point Q, which is f of x1 plus delta x, minus the y value for point P, which is f of x. And then it's going to be the x value for point Q, which is x1 plus delta x, minus the x value for point P, which is x1. And then when it's all said and done, we get f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x all over x1 minus x1 here cancel each other out so we just get delta x and that is our slope now that's just using these two points x1 comma f of x1 and x1 plus delta x comma f of x1 plus delta x that's our slope of this secant line now we're talking about this secant line turning into a tangent line and if that's the case that happens we said when delta x approaches zero and if delta x is approaching zero, we get zero in the denominator, which is what we've been talking about in limits so far. So our next slide, we're gonna talk about what the actual definition is, combining this concept with limits. So here's our definition of the derivative. It says the slope of a line that is tangent to a curve at the point P, which is x1 comma f of x1, which is often called f prime x, is this thing. f prime x, which is our, our slope, which is called the derivative is the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x1 plus delta x minus f of x1 all over delta x. So remember, we just did that with this curve. We said as this point, p and q got really close together. So this secant line between them, as it became a tangent line for p, we said that delta x was approaching zero. And that would be then be the slope of that line because we went through the whole process of taking the change in y over the change in x. Now, a lot of times people don't like putting in x1s and delta x's. And so if you don't like x1 and delta x, you're going to find in a lot of textbooks that they replace delta x. They just make that equal to h. And then they just use x instead of x1. 
And that way um, it makes it a little bit cleaner. You don't have to worry about writing this change in X all the time and writing in the one uh, by the X. So we get the limit as H approaches zero of F of X plus H minus F of X all divided by H. So here's an example. It says use the definition of the derivative to find the slope of the line tangent to the point one comma three on the graph of f of x equals two x squared plus one. So that means we're gonna use this concept of the derivative of f prime x equals the limit as we're gonna use h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So when we're doing this we need to find f of x plus h. So if f of x is 2x squared plus 1, then f of x plus h is 2 times x plus h squared plus 1 minus f of x. And so f of x here is uh, 2x squared plus 1. Now, that's all divided by h. The thing is that we know what um, x actually equals. Um, because it is 1 and we know that f of x is actually equal to 3 so we can actually put in a 1 in here instead of the x and we can put in a 3 instead of f of x but in by putting in a 1 into this chunk right here we get 2 1 squared plus 1 which is 3 right and that's why it's the point 1 comma 3 if you plug a 1 in here you get a 3 so what we've got here now is that we're gonna call this the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 and 1 plus h squared plus 1 minus 3 all over h. And when we do the math here we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times we square a binomial that makes it 1 plus 2h plus h squared plus 1 minus 3 all divided by h and the limit as h approaches 0 of if I have to multiply this 2 inside, I have 2 plus 4h plus 2h squared um, minus 2 now on the out, outside of these brackets, and that is all over h. And now I can see how the 2 and the negative 2 here cancel each other out. So we get 4h plus 2h squared all divided by h. And now we can make, um, we can, sorry, cancel out h's first by taking an h out of here, an h out of there, and one of the h's out of there. And so I'm left with the limit as h approaches zero of, oops, that's not an equal sign, of four plus two h. And that means that as, I, as h approaches zero, this thing will approach four. And all that means is that on this parabola, because it's a parabola, it's two x squared plus one, at the point one comma three, so if I were to draw a sketch of that thing, at the point one comma three up here, so there's a oops parabola that goes through that point. The slope of the tangent line right at this point, the slope of this line right here is going to be four, and that is the definition of the derivative. And it's really important in math and sciences to to be able to do or find the derivative. And so what we're doing today is going through how you actually do that. So the slope right here is equal to four. So our final example, it says find the slope and the equation of the tangent line. So not only are we going to find the slope of this tangent line, we're also going to find its equation. Um, that's tangent to the curve, f of x equals x squared minus 4x at x equals 3. So again, we're going to use this limit as x approaches, sorry, h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now we know that the x value is 3 so we can plug in a 3 plus h now. We don't know the y value so we might as well find that out right away. So f of 3 is going to be uh, 3 squared minus 4 times 3 and that equals 9 minus 12 so we're looking at negative 3. So if we're finding the limit as h approaches 0 of f of instead of x plus h we know the x value it's 3 so we're gonna find f of 3 plus h so that means I'm gonna put in a 3 plus h here I'm gonna put in a 3 plus h there so I get 3 plus h squared minus sorry 4 times 3 plus h minus f of x or f of 3 in this case which is negative 3 that's all over h 
So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of, if I square this binomial, I get 9 plus 6h plus h squared minus 4 times 3, which is 12, and minus 4h. And this now becomes plus 3. That's all over h. And look at how this thing worked out again. We have 9 plus 3, which is 12, minus 12, which means all those things cancel each other out. And we get the limit as h approaches 0 of 6h minus 4h, which is 2h, plus h squared, all divided by h. This, by the way, is no accident. This will happen every time that you will end up with all these constants canceling out, and you'll be able to cancel out this h with uh, an h in the, both the top and the bottom. So I get the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h, because we have this h canceling out with one of those h's and that h there. So we get 2 plus h. Well, now as, as x or h approaches 0, that means that the limit here is just 2. So that means the slope of the line that passes, or that is tangent to the curve x squared minus 4x at x equals 3, that slope happens to be 2. But we need to find out the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to use the old y equals mx plus b. I know the slope of the tangent line is 2. And I know th um, that I still need to find the y-intercept here. So I'm going to plug a point that I know is on the curve. And the point that I know is on the curve, I've already found out, it is 3 comma negative 3. And so what happens here, I get negative 3, 6 plus b. I subtract 6, that means b is equal to negative 9. So the equation of my line is y equals 2x minus 9. So again, we have this parabola. Has, uh, we know that the 2x intercepts with quick factoring tells us that it's uh, at 0 and 4. And I know that the point 3 comma negative 3 is on this parabola. And if I'm looking for the slope of that line right there, it's actually going to be negative 9. So I've probably shown this the wrong way because I should be, sorry, that's the slope, sorry, is going to be positive 2. My bad. Um, so the slope here is positive 2, and the y-intercept of this line means that it crosses down here somewhere at negative 9. So in summary, we know that the derivative is the slope of a line that is tangent to a curve at a specific point, which we call x comma f of x. We know the mathematical definition of the derivative is f prime x, that's just saying the derivative is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x minus x1, sorry, plus delta x minus f of x1, all divided by delta x. Or if you don't like the x1s and the delta x's, we changed it to read uh, h as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. And we know that this was found by looking at how the slope of a moving secant line changed on a curve until it became a tangent line, which meant that the change in x, which we call delta x, which we changed to h, <laughs> was approaching 0, and hence we used limits. So as delta x approached 0, we knew that we were get, becoming closer to the, the slope of the tangent line as opposed to the slope of that secant line. So your assignment is on pages 167 to 168. Uh, good luck, and we'll see you in class.